All right, all right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to day 31. We're back into legs. We are going to be getting those uh, glutes, hamstrings, and everything else in the leg going today. Make sure that, as always, you are using and contracting the core, keeping track of your pelvis as we move along. We want to try to keep that pelvis neutral. So that big bony structure in your hips, you want to make sure it's not tilting forward. You want to make sure it's not tilting too far under, but have it right neutral uh, set over those hips with your shoulders pretty much all times. Our twists and rotations and things of that nature are going to come through our mid back. So that low back is going to stay stable. And you do that by keeping the core strong and you have more mobility in that mid back. OK, I have a box that we're going to be using today <clears throat> and two 25 pound kettlebells. As always, dumbbells are just fine. We're going to start off with a little warm up. So use your box and extend your legs straight out in front of you. The toe is going to be up on top of the box. And then we're just going to hinge over that leg, get a little stretch through the hamstring. Go about five here. So again, keep those hips level. Three, reach the chest toward that toe. <clears throat> And five, coming up. Okay, then just bend into that knee, stretch that back hip flexor. And then we'll go to the other side. So we're gonna do uh, quite a few single leg movements today. So single leg deadlifts, and we're gonna be doing step ups, and we're gonna be doing drop offs. And then between those single leg moves, we're gonna hit some body weight squats, and some lunge jumps. So a lunge jump is indicative of just kind of like a squat, a jump squat. You're gonna lunge and then jump and then land right back into the lunge that you just came out of. All right, and then hinge forward. <clears throat> but of course we are going to be starting with some core. All right, so we're gonna be using one of our kettlebells um, if you want to go body weight, that's also an option. So you'll hold your bell at the chest and then we're going to twist a standing crunch side to side. Okay. So we're going to do our core a little bit different today. Stay up off the ground and uh, get some movement there. So we'll go 10 each side and let's gear up slide shoulder blades back and down belly strong and then pull opposite knee to elbow. So I want you to feel like your core is what's pulling the knee up. Use your back muscles to help rotate. Keep that pelvis stable. Pull your belly button back and then wrap all the way around that rib cage. Eight, tall chest, nine, <clears throat> and 10. <clears throat> okay, from here, we're gonna grab our bells, one in each hand. Uh, stack your shoulders, that's what I want to say, and pack your shoulder blades down. Keep that, helvet, that pelvis still, and you're going to hinge to one side. We're going to go 10 on one side and 10 on the other. Shoulder blades up, back, and down. Contract the belly. Reach. It's a nice little stretch and a pull. So I'm hinging to my right. But I have more flexion through my left oblique to pull me back up. Still wrapping all the way around that abdomen. Chest is nice and tall. Pack into your shoulder blades and engage the back muscles to support the weight yanking on those arms. Eight, nine, ten. Other side. Reach. Nice little stretch as well. <clears throat> Range of motion through that back. <sighs> four, try not to lose your hips. So we're not going for a big hip thrust to the side, but just a hinge. Hinging in that oblique, contract through that pulling side. So my right side, pulling me back to the top. Eight nine and 10. All right, get rid of one kettlebell or dumbbell. 
and you're going to go into a supported lunge position or a static lunge position. So if your right leg is back, left leg forward, you're going to drop down into your lunge, stabilize those hips so your back knee's barely off the ground, your weight's right back into the chest, and you're going to twist over that front leg. All right? Count this one. One, two. Belly locks in. Three, four. Try not to lose your hips. Six. Seven. Remember how we get where we're going is super important. Nine. Ten. Other side. Lock into the core. Try to get those legs lined up. Hip width. Four. Twist through that mid back. Did lots of twisting last week. Four, full body day, eight, nine, ten. Start waking up the legs there as well. All right, set that bell down. Just take a quick little shift. We're going to go one more set. Then we'll get into those legs. <sighs> okay. Bring that bell back up. We're going to do our alternating march, twisting crunch. Right here. Just like we're doing a runner sit up from the ground, basically. So tuck and scoop and tighten through that core. Six, seven, eight, nine. All right, grab both bells or dumbbells. Guess bells either way. Hinge forward, that flat back. Pack it up. Find your solid stance and then lean, contract. Two, three. Shoulder blades back and down. Focus that core. Pelvis all the way around. Nine and ten. Other way. Three, four. Get the work where you want it. Seven. Flex through that abdomen. Nine. <clears throat> 10. Okay, and then we'll do our lunge with a twist. <clears throat> Flex into both legs, grab through that core. Two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other side, twist over your front leg. Five, six. Belly strong. Ten. All right. Now we get to move on to that body weight squat. We're going to go 20 and then our lunge jumps. All right, just set your feet, hips drop straight down and in, drive up through those heels. Ten, still watching that pelvis. Nine and ten. Okay, set up your lunge. So if you don't jump, it's not a problem. All you're going to do is just set up that lunge, push up off your back toe. Otherwise, slide with your arms, and we're going to jump. Okay, here's one, two, just five, and five. Other side, 
Set it up. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Okay. Grab those kettlebells. I'm going to hold one each side. <clears throat> and we're going to set up for a single leg deadlift. Squats are quick. Lunge jumps are quick. We're going to take our time with our single leg moves. So contract the core. Line up the knee and the toe. You're going to make sure that as you hinge forward, <clears throat> the back leg stays flexed and those hips stay level. Woo. Flex into that back. Watch your pelvis. Try your best to keep it fixed. Drive up through that heel. You're solid through the whole foot. You're finding all four corners of the foot, but if you really think about driving your body back to the top from the heel, you're getting much more hamstring and glute, which is what we want. Belly hold strong. Seven. Eight. Flex into those shoulder blades just like we did for our hinge. Pack into that back. 10. <clears throat> Hold strong through the core. Make sure that your back leg hinges with your upper body or lifts with your upper body. So as opposed to leaning forward and then kicking, Make sure that everything moves together. Five. Eight. Hold that core, level those hips. Ten. Okay, back into our squat for 20. Sit back on those heels. Go for range. Eleven. Knees lying with those pinky toe sides of the foot. 18, 19, 20. Okay, set up for your lunge jumps. Five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, perfect. Okay, next up we're gonna do a box step. And I'm gonna hold both weights, slowing down again. Trying to put that single leg under a lot of weight. So again, we want to watch the hips, the pelvis, the core, and the back. <clears throat> Set up your one leg on the box. If you don't have a box, you'll do lunges. Line that knee and the toe, hold the core strong, so watch that you don't throw your weights. Especially if they're heavy, your weights are gonna wanna swing forward to help you get up. We gotta resist that. Four, drive through that heel. Five, again, we wanna find the glute, the hamstring. Six, core and stability in the back. Ten. One. Level those hips. Line the knee and the toe. Eight. 
Lift that chest. Four. Six. Watch your pelvis, the top and the bottom. Nine. And ten. Oh. Okay. Squats and lunge jumps. Ten. Make sure you're sitting back. Where's the core? Hold it strong. 18, 19, 20. Lunge. Five, four, three, two, one. Lock into that belly. One. Okay. One weight. And we're going to do a single leg drop off. If you don't have a box, hold your weight on the side, the opposite side of the supporting leg. So it's going to be similar to kind of like a single leg deadlift, except I want you to extend the leg out and back in. So your leg is going to hinge just a little differently than if you have your box or than if you're in your single leg deadlift. Okay. So start with one leg on the box. Set your weight. So my left foot's on the box. Weight's in the right hand. Get yourself set almost to the edge. Okay. The right leg is dropping off. And then you're going to just hinge down. Knee lines with that toe. And then press up. Watch that pelvis. Two. Your weight's up to you. Three, try not to slide your leg on the box. Six, strong back, strong core. Nine, 10, okay. Other side, other leg, so turn around or find a different part of your box. Each leg is gonna be a little different. That's good, that's what we're here for. Figuring out what's going on with the body, increasing strength in those single side movements. Five. Slow down, find that flexion in. Seven, notice if the knee is falling in or out. It's feedback, we need to fix those things. Where we need to strengthen, Ooh, 10. Where we need to stretch. Okay, squats. Six, seven, lots of belly. Even here, try to recognize whether or not you're pushing evenly through both legs. If you're sitting more on one leg than the other. Jump lunges. Four, five. Two, three, four, five. All right. Single leg deadlifts. Second and final round. Make it count. 
Level off the hips, belly strong. You don't have to tap the ground. It's more about finding flexion in the glute, hamstring, back, core. Five. Six. Feel the back lengthen. Find the four corners of the foot. Nine. Ten. One. If you need to hold support on a box and just hinge forward and back with something to help you balance, that's fine. But don't give up. Such a key exercise and movement to build function and health, strength for all the other movements we do in our day. Nine, 10. Squats. Ooh, it's interesting going from those single leg moves into the squat. I don't know if you felt it. One leg feels a little different. So see if you can find that neuromuscular connection to fix discrepancies. Push evenly. Three, two, one. Four, five. Four, five. <clears throat> All righty. Stack shoulders, stack hips. Find that push through the heel. Ten, each side. Find your knee and toe. Should feel heavy. Work both directions of the move. Nine. Ten. Oh, yeah. At capacity. Two. Shoulders back and down. Lock the core. Tall chest. Watch the hips. <clears throat> Control those weights. <sighs> Ten. <sighs> okay. Squats. <sighs> Ten. Where's your core? Sit back on those heels. Seven, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, five, four, come on, keep that jump. Four. Okay, I'm going to start on my other leg this time. Getting tired. Have to set in. Here we go. My right leg's on the box first. So left hand holding. 
your weight. Find your foundational muscles, core. Line that knee and toe. One, two, three, four. Push your hips back. Tighten that belly. Nine, watch your knee. Ten, you can feel it. Getting a little noodly. Keep it set in. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Hinge. Four. Push your limit. Five. Notice differences side to side. Scan the body. Eight. Nine. Push into that shake. Ten. Yes. All right. Okay, if you have your box, we're going to use it for our stretch. So depending on your quad and femur height, you might need to change the direction of your box. Or you can use some towels or pillows to add height. Um, but if you can get your legs right on the box in a 90 degree angle, that would be great. So all I want you to do is just start there. Make your arms into cactus arms and relax. You should be able to feel all and any pressure if you have any release from that low back. If you have low back issues, sciatica, SI joint, this is one of the top ways to get that figured out. Take your right ankle, cross it over the left knee, and try to push your right knee into the box. Flex your foot. Okay, same side, just take your left foot and push it on the box. Oh, that feels good. If you don't have a box for this set, you can use a wall as well, putting your foot on the wall. Okay, put your legs back on top of the box. Cross your left ankle over the right knee. Push your left knee into the box. Check out what happens as you crisscross your legs. Did your pelvis lift and twist? Mine did. So I'm going to be checking into that. My right hip may be a little higher than my left. My body's been able to compensate. Okay, put your right foot on the box. Pull the legs in. But over time, that's going to mean aggravation for my hip, SI joint, back, sciatica nerve. So I want to check into that. Oh, okay, shimmy yourself to the edge of whatever ledge you're working on. So if you're on your couch, shimmy over. Hopefully your floor is cleaner than mine. Okay, uh, keep your right leg on your box and extend the left leg long. We don't have a ton of time to hold here, but if you have any issues with your uh, hip flexors or psoas, you want to hold this about a minute. This just helps release. Sometimes your hip flexors get scared, freaked out. Something's not quite going right, so they're going to clench up and protect. All right, now shimmy over to the right. OK, 
Okay, clip your left leg on the box, right leg long. Continue to think in terms of function. Whatever we're doing in our workout, we need to be able to relate that to our day-to-day -day lives, even if it's not a super active life, right? We still are putting our bodies into motion and positions and postures consistently that set the body up for compensations. Okay, lean over those legs or for tightness, posture, over time, sitting, leaning, hunching, we need to get away from, get ourselves functioning better, more mobile and flexible. All right, that was fun. Good job. Let's do it again tomorrow. See you then.